Hello and welcome to part 2 of modeling multiple regression with OpenMX. In this video we will be modeling systems of equations. That is, we will be modeling multiple equations simultaneously using path modeling. Here is an example. This path model represents the system of multiple regressions at the top of this video. Note that we have paths from our predictors to our first outcome, y1 as well as paths from our predictors to our second outcome, y2. Our outcomes also have unique error variances as they are from separate equations in our system. In path analysis, we can also model a two-headed arrow between the outcomes. Unlike the two-headed arrows about the predictors, which model covariance between variables, this two-headed arrow is modeling covariance between the error terms of these two outcomes. Ideally, this value would be zero, but we do not want to assume anything and can test this later. We also model the means of our predictors as well as a separate intercept term for each of our outcomes. I have omitted this part in the diagram for legibility reasons, but in OpenMX we will model these as well. Let's get started. First we load OpenMX with the library function. Then we read in our data. This data was generated by the models that you see here. Next, we inspect the data with the summary function. We have three predictor variables, x1, x2, and x3, and two outcome variables, y1 and y2. And we store the names of these variables into an object called manifests. Now let's make our model. We'll call this model multiple regression, and it will be a RAM type model. Manifest vars will be our manifest variables. The A matrix for this model models all paths from the predictor variables to the outcome variables. These are our starting values for our predictors to our outcome variables. Next we specify our dim names. We set the paths that we want to be free to true, and we give them labels. Next we model our S matrix. Notice here that we model a covariance between our outcome variables. This is interpreted as an error variance covariation. Next, we model our mean and set our expectation function. Finally, we close with a data statement. Let's run this model. Looking at our model estimates, we can see that our model did a fairly good job of recovering the true parameter values. We can now test if it was worth modeling the covariance between the error terms in our model. As in previous videos, we make a new MX model by using our original model. This time we are replacing the S matrix with an S matrix which does not include a covariance parameter between our outcome variables. Looking at a model comparison, we see that our p-value is above 0.05. This indicates that the smaller model, that is, a model which we did not model a covariation between the error terms of our outcome variable, is just as good a fit as a model which does have that parameter. Thus, it may have been better to estimate this model without using that parameter. Thanks for watching.